So what is going on guys, it's your boy Nistro here. This time we're going to be discussing Ragnarikas or Rikas as they used to be known as in the OCG. What they offer to tr the three types that they support, which are insect, plant, or reptiles. Rika is a really interesting tri-type. It seems like they're following the kind of tri-brigade pattern of the three beast types of beast, beast warrior, wing beast, to now be this new variant of tri-brigade for insect plant or reptile decks which are three of the most under supported types in Yu-Gi-Oh! only really beaten by like pyro and like thunder are like the two most unsupported types and you know obviously throughout the past year we've gotten plenty of stuff for pyro and thunder dragons just got their boss monster back those decks will be fine for now but for the most part the only deck that's been in the meta of these three types has been insects Reptiles have been around and they do still have a lot of good combos and we're going to be talking about the reptiles in this video But I want to kind of just cover what the Rika do in general Just so people are aware of their existence and what the engine is like and why the engine is a bit flawed compared to Tribrigade and what Tribrigade offered its archetypes and you're gonna see the like distribution of the typings that didn't really matter in Tri Brigade, where it didn't really matter if it was Beast, Wing Beast, or Beast type, or, or Beast Warrior type, it, as long as it was one of the three, they could all like come together pretty easily. Whereas in this deck, the typing of the cards does actually matter because for every insect, plant, and reptile deck, there is a certain point where you Xeno lock essentially and you cut off access to other types. So, for example, Rika or Arrow Mage. They Xeno lock pretty early. They lock themselves into plant monsters only pretty early on in their turn. So you go through some of this uh, Ragnarika support and Evil Seed's a plant and the Link 2's a plant. That's all you get for plants. You get a Link 2 and Evil Seed, which is like, okay. I mean, it's not a terrible thing that, that you know, plant decks get extra extenders, but what is that really going to do for them? And the second problem with the Ragnarikas compared to Tribrigade is that Ragnarikas actually lock you into the typings, right? So if you use a uh, Ragnarikas effect to search, you cannot special summon for the rest of the turn except insect, plant, or reptile monsters. If you wanted to use this as like a starter, you probably could. But when you come to something like Skeletal Soldier, which is our version of Sprite Alf, basically, it only summons back the Ragnarika monsters from Graveyard, right? So this one, the entire turn that you activate either of his effects to either revive himself or to summon back a Ragnarika monster, you are locked into Insect, Plant, and Reptile. So now that gives you less space to pivot. Again, making it harder for a deck like Ogdoatic to use this support because as we know about Ogdoatic now, Ogdoatic uses dinosaur support. We use the, the Evil Zars and we use Mina Dorned. So there's some of this support that we're just not gonna be able to use simply because the restrictions are kind of too much. And Tribigate did not have this problem because Tribigate only stopped you from link summoning using anything except for the three types. Whereas this one just straight, lock, just straight up locks you out of playing anything that is not one of the three types. So you understand the difference. In Tribigate, for example, if your deck w had a Synchro Monster, or if your deck had Tuners, you could still Synchro Summon into anything using any type of monster. It didn't matter. You could still Fusion, you could still Exceed Summon. There is nothing stopping you. Whereas in this deck, it does stop you from doing that. So that is the first big issue. And let's just read over what some of these cards do, just so we can get a better understanding of where or if we should be using these cards and where we would use them in. So Evil Seed, right, level one plant. And you can special summon it from your hand by sending a plant, insect, or reptile from hand to grave, and you only summon it once per turn that way, which doesn't activate, so that's cool. Good extender, as I said. If this card's normal summoned, you can add to your hand up to two different Ragnarika cards of yours that are banished or in your deck except Evil Seed itself, and then you banish one card from your hand, also your Xeno locked out of two to three types. It's a minus one to summon it because you have to go summon and send one, so from a five card hand you're going down to three. You search two, which puts you back up to five, then you go minus one on the search, meaning you basically 
just go minus one to summon it. Like it just summons itself from hand, except you get to reshuffle some cards in your hand, which isn't bad, but it only searches Ragnarika cards, which as we go over more of the support, you'll start to see the issue with that. Now, I don't mind that it banishes cards from hand because the Ragnarikas do like banishing cards a lot, and that I think works pretty well. And I think balances a card from being like this crazy plus one as well. Not that I think a plus one would have been like a terrible thing for Ragnarika to have. So Samurai Beetle is a level three insect. This is kind of like the point that I'm gonna bring home is that insects benefit the most out of playing the actual engine of this deck because insects already have a lot of cards that lock them out of their turn too on, you know, the same way that Plant does. But Plant can't really use a lot of these extenders because there aren't that many good plant extenders whereas insects kind of get like the best of both worlds out of this because insects don't lock themselves entirely but they still they still have the flexibility to play more of the engine compared to let's say ogdoatic or samurai beetle level three insect you can summon it from your hand by placing one of your banished insect plant or reptile monsters to the bottom of your main deck right so if it's searched with evil seed then you should have a monster that's banished, right? Because you can banish a card after searching. You can only summon it once per turn. And it sends to the bottom of main deck, so it doesn't, like, shuffle it. It just makes sure it goes to the bottom. And then if this card is sent to the graveyard as a, as a material for a Ragnar, like a Link monster, you can target level 4 lower insect plant or reptile monster in your graveyard, except Samurai Beetle, summon it in defense position. That's really good if you have consistent access to banishing cards. It's almost like a Nemesis Corridor. Or, or, or like a nemesis monster. It's like, it, it summons itself by, you know, bringing one of your banished monsters back. And then after you use it for a link summon, you can uh, revive uh, plant insect or uh, reptile monsters. And then if you mix that with something like your skeletal soldier, which can revive Ragnarika monsters, it seems like a pretty good line. It's not a terribly bad line to uh, go into, but you're going to need something outside of the engine to take full advantage of this. And so it being a level three insect, I think Insector is one very big benefactor of all this support because the ability to revive cards like Dragonfly or Centipede and to be able to loop their effects for like a second or third time after like linking them off would be amazing because Insector is already being able to loop their like Dragonfly and Centipede to like get them searches and pluses and like extra bodies on field. The Samurai Beetle could be a pretty good way to make that happen. The only issue being is that if we if we preemptively use something like Evil Seed to de to to get the Samurai Beetle, then we lock ourselves out of cards like Appaloosa, SP, really good, powerful extra deck staples that can help us push against the opponent or protect us from hand traps. So that's like the given the, the the take with playing maybe more searchers for Evil Seed. So I don't think Beetle is a three of, but maybe in a deck like bee trooper where you can summon this without needing to summon it with its own effect maybe in a deck like that it could be a little better it's definitely not a bad card overall it just it's really best in an insect deck it's really best in like bee trooper and insector compared to either plant or reptile next is the ragnarika armored lizard um and this is the reptile one and this is one that i think reptile decks could actually use simply because it's a half decent extender right because it sums itself by banishing a reptile plant or insect from your, from your graveyard this will set up for your um samurai beetle if you want to search both off of evil seed then you will have the extension to probably make it up all the way up to link five with the ability to like revive monsters and the skeletal soldier's ability to revive itself it's not even like this deck is bad at doing what it does it just doesn't give us a lot of flex room it, it just doesn't give us a lot of room to breathe in terms of like other potential cards we could put on our end board. We're, we're kind of locked into the engine. And as you'll see, there's not a lot that we can access within our own engine that actually gives us powerful means of dealing with what our opponent can do. And this is really good just in any variant of like insect plant or reptile decks, just because it can just summon itself from hand. That's, that's if for a relatively easy cost, it can just summon itself from hand. And you can discard an insect, plant, or reptile, target a face on monster your opponent controls. And for some reason, it excludes insect, plants, or reptiles, so it's useless in like a mirror match, I guess. 
and then you could bounce that monster to hand. I don't know why it, it excludes the same typing, but cool. Like it, I mean, it's a somewhat decent removal, right? Most cards in the game are not one of these three types. Most monsters on your opponent's field will not be one of these three types, so that's fine, I guess. It's just weird. Like, like why would they write that there? And the fact that he's a level four extender that can also remove cards from field means that it's a pretty decent tech card in like Ogdoatic where we can search this off of King if we already have access to like Noya or to Nunu. And then we'll be able to like push, use it as like a board breaker, either overlay into another King, link it off, do whatever we need to do. So next we have Skeletal Soldier and th th these are all the, the main deck monsters, by the way. We only have three main deck monsters, one spell and one trap, that's it. So this is why I'm saying it's like locking ourselves into like searching Ragnarikas and then only being able to access like three cards is like, yeah. And none of these cards are really self-sufficient besides seed, like Samurai Beetle and Armored Lizard are not self-sufficient. You have to be like pretty knee deep into your engine to really take advantage of these two cards. So that's why they do kind of suffer from like, you, you kind of don't want to draw them, you want to search them at the very least, just so that they're more effective. Like once you search them, you, you, you're you probably already in a situation where you can use them. Whereas if you hard open them, Lizard and Beetle may not actually be useful in, in any meaningful capacity. It's so hard to explain why these cards are not bad, but aren't really amazing either. They're kind of just in between. They're really good utility cards and they could probably really help decks extend, but they're not gonna make your deck meta. You know, they're not gonna, you know, push your deck up a tier. They're just gonna be really good extenders. And I think the same thing can be said for Skeletal Soldier. I know because it's a fire actually, there's actually a pretty funny thing that you can do. You can you, you can summon this in Ogdoatic and um, I, I got a few combos from the Ogdoatic Discord showing off some of the ways that we would use Ragnarika in our list. And so the way we would use Skeletal Soldier is just to summon it, just so we can link off into Princess and then have a fire to summon back from Graveyard. That's Skeletal Soldier's only purpose in the deck. We can't use either of its effects because we already summoned Princess. We already summoned the Evil Zor. We can't use any of its effect. In Ogdoatic, you won't really see much of Skeletal Soldier besides just as a, it just has a fire body to summon back off a of Princess, but if we have access to Leos, we don't need Skeletal Soldier anyway. Maybe in like a turn two, turn three scenario where we want to rebuild a board, this might be useful, but it summons the Ragnarikas in defense, meaning it can't revive the actual Link monsters, but it can revive itself from graveyards. I'll explain a little more later as to why this works pretty well in Ogdoatic, but essentially Ogdoatic is amazing at rebuilding its board and Ragnarika will only make it like double as good at rebuilding its board. Next we have Stack Sovereign and this one's an insect, right? So this is the biggest guy in the deck. This is the Link 5, right? Same requirements. And then if a monster is summoned for your opponent's deck and or extra deck, you can destroy two monsters on the field, right? It's a pretty good body to end on. And this is like insects first real boss monster besides the bee trooper stuff we got like a few years back. For the longest time for bee troopers, their one boss monster was DPE. That was the biggest uh, criticism about bee troopers here in TCG. They really had no originality to them. They were just a DPE dot deck and they couldn't really fight the allegations. They couldn't really beat the DPE, DPE dot deck allegations because once Verte got banned, the deck started doing a whole lot worse and it was like to no one's surprise. To see Insects actually getting a proper boss monster that actually does something significant to stop the opponent now is pretty cool. That's really it. Like every every Ragnarika Link has the ability where if it's in Grave, you can shuffle one of your three types back to play to uh, summon it from a uh, graveyard and then you're Xeno you know, locked for the rest of the turn if you do that. They're not banished when they leave the field this way, so they can keep coming back and back and back. It's really not terrible that we get to revive our Link monsters from Graveyard. So we have a really good grind game with this Ragnarika support. It's just, we don't have that really good initial push with the engine, but if you're using a different engine, like maybe Rika or um, Insector, Bee Trooper or Ogdoatic, then all those individual engines can make the initial push and the Ragnarika can be the turn two, turn three setups. So now we have Ragnarok of Bloom, which is our spell card. It's our searcher. So it increases the attack of the three types by 300 attack and defense. And uh, anything that's not one of those three types loses 300 attack and defense. So it's like a 600 difference that you will have 
in attack points. During your main phase, you can activate one of these effects, right? So either you add a Ragnarika monster from deck to hand and you drop one, or you could summon one of your Ragnarikas that are hand grave or banished in defense. But because it says defense, it's not your extra deck monsters. It's just really a searcher, but it doesn't lock you. So if you only wanted to use like, let's say Samurai Beetle, then you can just play Bloom, search Samurai Beetle, and you can just skip Evil Seed just so that you're not locking yourself preemptively. You still have access to a card like Bloom. I don't think it's a bad card. I think it's a pretty good searcher, and I think it's uh, it's pretty balanced in, in how it works. Maybe you can tech in a copy of Armored Lizard. If, you, if you're if you opening the Beetle already, just need to banish something, then you can go for the Armored Lizard. I would say this gives you the ability or the option to play one Evil Seed, like maybe three Bloom, one Evil Seed, just so that you have the ability to um, to actually resolve Samurai Beetle if your engine doesn't already banish cards. But if you go into something like SP Little Knight, you'll be able to banish one of your monsters anyway, so you really don't need to play Evil Seed if you have like SP Little Knight. And another thing I don't like about the engine is that you have Bloom that can add a Ragnarika, but then you have Ragnarika that needs to go minus one again to get its searches on. And you don't really get too much plus, like you get Samurai Beetle and you get Skeletal Soldier, so you do get two monsters back from that, from using that line, but it's also like not amazing because you're going minus two basically just to, just to go bloom into Evil Seed, so I don't think it's that good. So here we have Ment Mantis Monk and Chain Coils, and again we have another Insect Link monster. This is why I was saying Insects really benefit the most out of all three types, because Plant is not going to be able to summon this. By the time Plant can get three monsters on field, they're already Xeno locked. So it's most likely, unless they're playing the Ragnarika engine specifically, which is weaker than playing the Rika engine, then that's the only way they'd be able to make this Mantis Monk. Ogduatic can make this no problem, but as long as we're, like the links for all the Ragnarika, Ogduatic can make no issue. It's the main deck stuff like Evil Seed, or the skeleton, like it's anything that locks us that we can't use, preemptively locks us. So that's why we can't use Skeletal Soldier and that's why we can't use Evil Seed. Mantis Monk here, this one says two plus including a plant, insect, or reptile, and that's different. All the materials be part of the three types. It's the smaller ones that can use any insect, plant, or reptile monster, right? So Mantis Monk can banish two, add the Ragnarika Trap from your deck to your hand, and then the second effect is the same, shuffle one back, or not shuffle, place it at the bottom of the deck, and then bring him back. And so Hunting Dance is our trap card. You can target cards your opponent controls up to the number of different monster types among the linked monsters you control that are insect, plant, or reptile. Destroy them. So if you control multiple links or even a single link that's uh, one, of the, one of your three types, then you can destroy anywhere from one to three. If a face-up insect, plant, or reptile monster you control is destroyed by battle or by card effect while this card is in your graveyard, except the turn it was sent there, you can banish this card, target a monster your opponent controls, and pop it. Which isn't bad right? Like just the extra removal could probably be significant for like breaking down some strategies and breaking boards. I think it's a pretty decent one of, I don't think it hurts any of the decks that you could play this card in. It's just, I can't see Rika making this conveniently, but Ogdoatic and Insect decks, Mantis Monk, there you go. Next we have a uh, Ragnarika Chain Coils, and this is the final monster because we've gone through to Link 5, Link 2, Link 3. And now Chain Coils is a Link 4 and it's a fire. And this is why I said you want to go Promethean Princess back into Skeletal Soldier because now we have a new fire target to summon off of uh, Princess because Princess can only summon fire monsters while she's on field. And Chain Coils being a Link 4 fire is a perfect Promethean Princess target. And the fact that you can have a Princess set up in Graveyard is part of the reason why you don't want to actually play the Ragnarika engine <laughs> to begin with because that would stop you from being able to get an extra interruption for free, basically. So Chain Coils, if your opponent activates a monster effect except during the damage step, you can activate this effect. Neither player can activate the effects of monsters in the hand this turn. And this is, it's a little weird because going first, this does almost nothing. By the time you can get to Chain Coils, it's a Link 4, which means you would have already summoned four monsters and this would be fifth summon. So it's not even like there's any way in reality that this could stop Nibiru first turn. I don't know what hand traps they would be holding that they wouldn't have already used, maybe except like a Bestial or two, before you could resolve something like this. I guess maybe that would be it, but they can also chain to the effect because it, it is a trigger effect. It, it doesn't like, it's not a quick effect, so 
it's not like you're going to activate this like chain link two or chain link one it just says neither player can activate the effects of monsters in the hand and it also hits you as well which also hits your ability to potentially use hand traps and, and such meaning you might not be able to hand trap your opponent so you may not want to use this effect during your opponent's turn it's really better during your turn to use this this effect and i think the best case scenario for something like chain coils is a turn three where you've made a pretty significant board going first with uh, Ogdoatic, whether it's the effect lock with uh, cosmic Sector zero or you went the evil czar route and you hit them with like lars plus dulka plus ogdo abyss or like you just ended on a bunch of like uh generic extra negates like apo regulus ip into sp and something like that and you've kind of broken the board down and now like your opponent couldn't really kill you through your board but they were still able to break the board so now going into turn three chain coils can summon itself back once they activate any monster effect they're locked out of hand traps which could which could stop a turn three nib pretty easily it could probably stop drolls in hand ash blossom veilers in hand stuff like that although if they have veiler they'd probably just veiler this because you might as well just veiler if you're going to do something like that you'd only want to use this effect during your turn but it's ultimately here because it's a reptile that lets us get princess in graveyard and it also recurs itself it's much less about the effect and more just about its typing and its utility in the deck just for being able to give us a really good grind game now that we've gone over all of the new ragnaraka support because now i want to show you guys some of the combos from the ogdomatic discord now we're going to be uh kind of going over what does the new ragnarika stuff offer to ogdoatic right if we can't be using the entire engine what can ogdoatic do with some of the new stuff that makes it worth playing so our first three lines are going to be all off of the aratama so aratama can add sakitama on normal summon and just go into king of the feral limbs and so the idea is as long as you have a way into a rank it doesn't have to be Aratama Sakitama, but it's the best example of how this deck just does not need its normal summon at all, as, as long as it can get to a, a, a rank four. So we added Noya, and if you know about Noya and you know about Ogdoatic, Noya is like the starter, like the actual starter, because it gets you into Curse in Graveyard. Then Curse can tribute uh, King, uh, summon itself, on summon it, it summons back the Noya. Noya then can search any Ogdoatic spell or trap card. We can then go for Ogdoatic Daybreak which tributes an Ogdoatic monster and then summons tokens equals equal to every two levels that it had, right? So because Curse was a level eight, that's four level two tokens. So now we get to link off into Skeletal Soldier and we're gonna link one of the tokens into a Link Spider. We're gonna link off Skeletal Soldier and a Link Spider without using Skeletal Soldier's effect because that would be really minus. And also because we already summoned Link Spider so we can really do it anyway. And now Princess can bring back the Skeletal Soldier it could link using the token actually that's a pretty good thing that i didn't catch when i was watching this so we can go to token plus princess into chain coils and then go uh skeletal soldier plus chain coils into um our mantis and then mantis can add us this trap card now daybreak we needed to banish two to search the trap and now daybreak can shuffle back a a banished reptile monster I believe and then send a reptile from deck to graveyard so that means we can mill the night sword serpent a night sword serpent can then summon itself back overlay for merrymaker overlay for sargus sargus then can search regulus and then we can link off for something like the haggard lizard dose now if you don't know about this card already it's actually a new tcg exclusive link to reptile link monster and so what it does it only has one effect but it, it's it's pretty convoluted right so you banish a monster from your face-up field or graveyard with 2,000 or less attack, then target a monster on field. You banish one of your cards to target any monster on field. Just, just keep that in mind. You make its attack become equal to the original attack of the monster banished to activate the effect. Then, if you banished a monster that was originally Reptile, you draw a card, right? And that's a really long effect, but basically all it does is you banish one of your monsters from field or grave, and make a monster's attack become equal to the banished monsters, and then if you banish a reptile to use this effect, you draw one. So because our graveyard is full of reptiles and because, you know, this, <laughs> this is a reptile deck, we're, we basically just use it to banish one draw card. That's the that's the entire reason we, we're going to use this card. So so we banish Night Sword Serpent and we get to draw one. So uh, that's a pretty decent draw. Uh, we get to go Regulus to uh, equip the Sargus and now we get to go Chain Coils to summon itself back. 
And so now we kind of have like three interruptions here. We have like the Regulus, we have uh, Chain Coils to stop them from activating effects in hand. Maybe we wouldn't want to do that during their turn because we have four other cards in hand, or I think five other cards in hand now, because we started with just the one Eratama and now we're ending on, on a plus one. So we still, have, we, we still should have five cards in hand at this point. And then we also have the the trap card to pop one. So maybe you don't use Chain Coils effect during your opponent's turn, but you can definitely uh, use the trap and you can use Regulus. That's two interruptions. Curse in our graveyard. We have, we're gonna have the two Rikas in our graveyard, so we'll still be able to make a pretty sizable um, follow-up turn because Curse can summon itself back from Grave, this can summon itself back from Grave, this can summon itself back from Grave. The second replay, it's the same idea, right? You're just starting off with Aratama, um, and this one is like Aratama plus a discard, right? Because we have the, the two Sakitama in hand, so Sakitama can summon itself, go for King, King get Noya, right? And we already know how Noya works, Curse, Noya, search Daybreak. Daybreak can then access into Curse. Now we can go for the M frame. Now they did kind of mess up here, right? Because the Bujinki Ahashima. Oh, actually this, this is not real. This is not a real combo. <laughs> Uh, we actually can't do this one because uh, neither one of these spirits can be special summoned. But hey, look, we're going Sargus. We're going search Regulus. And go Echidna, Regulus, Night Sword, Mill, Cossack Slicer, Z Roll. And now we have the Z Roll lock with M Frame and with a Regulus and with Disc Coliseum. So to fix this combo line, we're basically just going to be going through the Leos. Uh, so the same way that Eratama plus another level four equals zero lock plus Therion, Leos can kind of do the same thing, except you won't be able to set up the evil singularity if you go for the zero lock this way. Like if you just do it off of one card, if you have two cards then yes, but just off of one card plus Nunu, this is what we get. So we're going to summon out Leos. Leos is going to mill Misk. Misk is going to banish. Summon uh, the Animadorn. Animadorn is going to pop the uh, Leos, search to Noya. And now we have access to Noya without needing to go into King of the Feralims, which is a lot more efficient because we're using less bodies to get access to the same thing. And this is where our combo really starts. Like you're tributing off King of the Feralims to summon back curse seven, eight times out of 10 anyway. So this is perfectly fine. This is a perfectly fine way to, to dig into Noya. Noya mill curse, curse tribute, summon, curse, summon Noya. Noya effect at daybreak, daybreak tribute, summon four. We're gonna link two into the uh, alien shock trooper M frame. And then we get to link two into Bujinki Ahashima. And Ahashima is pretty good because uh, it'll let you summon out your Leos plus your Nunu. This is why you need the other level four in hand. We're gonna overlay into Springin's Merrymaker. Overlay into Sargus. Sargus is gonna detach. Well, actually, no, not detach. Excuse me. Uh, it just searches the Disc Coliseum. Disc Coliseum gets you for Regulus. Uh, Daybreak gets to shuffle back Nanoya and then mill the Night Sword. Night Sword gets to summon itself out. Link off into Reptilian and Echidna. Go into Zero. Zero searches a trap, and then Regulus can set up the Sargus. And pretty much just off of Leos. Our next combo is using Aratama again, and we're going to be searching Sakitama to um, get our two level fours. Go for King of the Feralimps. Go for Noya. Noya's going to go for Curse. Curse is going to summon itself, summon Noya. Go for Daybreak. Daybreak. Link into Link Spider. Go into our Haggard Lizard Dose. And Haggard Lizard Dose can also use tokens, which is pretty cool. So now we can banish uh, Daybreak. Shuffle back the uh, Curse. And then uh, mill the Night Sword Serpent. So Night Sword Serpent can summon itself back now. Overlay for uh, Merrymaker into Sargus. Sargus can then search uh, Regulus, link off into Princess, and because, you know, both are uh, 
Sargus and Merrymaker are fire. We could bring it back. And now you can link off into Chain Coils and link off the token plus the Sargus into uh, IP. Then we get to go Regulus. And now you have IP plus um, Chain Coils plus uh, Regulus. So that means SP plus uh, Regulus. And we still, and we do still have Princess. We do still have Princess and Grave. Actually, I forgot to mention that with the last combo. But we have Princess and Grave. Uh, we have IP and we have uh, Regulus here, which is uh, pretty nice. Pretty nice line. Uh, if you want to wait until you use um, IP to use Princess, like you can go for Nightmare Phoenix. You can go for... Um, Yeah, like Nightmare Phoenix or Pit Knight Early could be two good ones to go into if you want to. Um, but if you're going to use Pit Knight Early, I say you should summon like Regulus in like this zone right here in like the middle zone so that when you go into Pit Knight, it like has its uh, its arrow pointing to Regulus so that if you need to use Regulus, Pit Knight Early can also trigger. So that's that's one thing that you can do as well. So next we have Snake Rain combo. So Snake Rain can mill four uh, reptile monsters from your deck to your graveyard. And so this is just assuming that you have Snake Rain and nothing else. So that's why you're milling your new you your new new and your curse and your Noya. Normally you would really you would go for like your bigger reptile monsters, like your Nephilabyss, your Ogdo Abyss, just so that they're already in graveyard so you don't have to mill them. Uh, mid combo, but this is this is still a good way to start out, right? So Nunu can summon itself back for free. Curse contribute Nunu, summon itself, summon Noya, go for Daybreak, Daybreak should be Curse, go for Skeletal, go for Princess, Princess summon back, go for Chain Coils, shuffle back Nunu, Mill Night Sword, Night Sword summon itself back, go for Sargus, search Regulus, go for Haggard. Draw one, go for Regulus, then we go for Zoha. Because we haven't actually used our normal summon yet, we get to then link off into Apo, summon back Chain Coils, and boom. So we have Apo, we have uh, Princess, and we have Regulus, which is now um, not just... It's three negates plus Princess, basically. Not to show, which if you watched my getting started with video last year, you know, I was a I, I kind of like this card, just the ability to, when it's tributed, summon an, an evil sore from deck. So it gives you access to Leos and it lets you uh, combo with like Nunu and, and stuff, but, or with Noya, I guess, because it's better to combo this with Noya than it is with Nunu. So now to show when it's tributed for curse, it gets to summon out Leos and then uh, you can chain block the Noya. So Leos sets directly from deck, so it can't be Ash Blossomed unlike uh, Noya. So uh, then you can set Evil Singularity. This time we're searching Water Lily. Uh, Naja Show is a reptile, so we may build up to four reptiles in Graveyard. So we're gonna overlay for King. King's gonna detach one to search Nunu. Nunu's gonna g go off, uh, mill our Nephilabyss, and Nephilabyss is just really great because it just has an effect where if you summon it from graveyard, you can just once per turn monster reborn a monster. The only reason why that's balanced is because to summon it by its own card effect, you have to be Xeno locked into Reptile for the next two turns. So that kind of balances out the effect, right? Where it's like, if you can summon it off of something like Water Lily, then Water Lily summon it back and then it won't be locking you into reptiles. But if you have to summon it by its own effect, then you're locked into the reptile support only. But that's not even a bad thing either because a lot of the higher level Ognoatic monsters have pretty good lingering or continuous effects. Uh, we're gonna overlay into Exceed Armor Fortress. This is where it gets a little spicy. Uh, we're gonna go Water Lily to mill. Now that we have at least four more reptiles, it basically says summon any reptile from your deck or graveyard, right? That's how this card reads. So we get to mill one, summon Nephilabyss. Nephilabyss will then get to summon back any monster from my graveyard, which we're going to choose a uh, Nasha Show. And then we're going to use uh, Nunu's effect to summon itself back. We didn't use Nunu's effect yet, 
So we can summon Nunu back because we control an Ogdoatic monster. And now we can for free kind of just tribute three, summon back Ogdo Abyss. And then we can trigger Naja Show to summon out another Leos because Naja Show is not once per turn. And what summoning Leos here does is that Leos can then use its effect to mill a fire or reptile dinosaur monster to the graveyard to make two monsters you control have those same stats as the monster that you milled. So as I said before, to trigger Leos, you need to have at least one monster that is both that is either different attribute or different um Actually, no, you don't need to do that because it's optional. So it doesn't really matter who you mill. But to resolve the second part of the effect, actually, you need to have at least one other monster that is either non-fire or non-rep or, or, or non-dinosaur. So because it's not a dinosaur and not a fire, we can target Curse here. And Curse now becomes the stats of Leos. So what that means is Curse is now a level four fire dinosaur monster, which means it is the perfect target to overlay into evil sword doka i remember seeing this when i when i first watched the combo i'm like dude what the fuck just happened and what's great is that um evil singularity goes for evil sword lars right and the reason why that's important is because lars can go um negate two face-up effects of any kind when it has materials that are only reptile or dinosaur so you basically get two more negates, you get two monster negates, two more negates, you get Ogdo Abyss to wipe the field of anything that is not summoned from Graveyard. So it will wipe the field clean of anything that is not um, Ogdo Abyss or Nephil Abyss. And then you also have full Armored Exceed here, which is a little more based. Uh, I'm not entirely sure its purpose. Like you can overlay Evil Soul Lars after you use both his effects. You can overlay it into Dark Knight Lancer because Dark Knight Lancer can use any rank five or rank six. And because you already have Fortress in Graveyard, you can then trigger the second effect of Full Armor Exceed to uh, banish itself, target Fortress, equip Fortress, and then uh, full, full Armor Dark Knight Lancer has a non-targeting effect to swallow a monster on field. And Although we didn't really use any of the Rika stuff here, this is again just showing like what the deck can do. And Leos is a good example as to why we don't want to preemptively lock ourselves. Or e even if we we were to use the Ragnarika stuff, we this deck functions a lot better when Leos is in the picture. And sometimes we have to normal summon it. Sometimes we have to special summon it. So we don't want to preemptively lock ourselves out of a card that gives us so much when Rika doesn't really give us that much except for turn three plays. So just to give you guys a sense of what else you can do with Octoatic Rika, kind of to show you guys the just pinnacle of how far the deck can go. I was theorying this stuff out with like how how many interruptions you can get off of just two cards pretty much. So two cards plus a discard. So we're gonna have Nunu, Naja Show, and a Veiler. And so we're gonna Nunu Mill the uh, Alarit here because we have the Naja Show in hand. And yes, there are alternatives. There are better alternatives to Nunu and, well, not to Nunu, to Alarit and the Naja Show. But they're also like, if these are like the worst versions of what they get, of what the deck can do, then there are better ways to do these lines. I'll just let the combo play out, right? So we Alarit, we tribute the Naja Show. Alarit gets to summon itself. The Naja Show triggers to summon out the Leos. Leos can then set Evil Singularity from deck. Uh, to play around the Imperm, uh, Leos can choose not to set Evil Singularity on its initial summon, mill the, uh, and instead just mill the Misk, Misk uh, get you to Animadorn, to Animadorn get you to Noya, and in that way, when you eventually go for Promethean Princess, then you revive the Leos, then you trigger Leos's effect to set the Evil Singularity, right? So that that way, like, if they Imperm you early, you still get to get the Evil Singularity, and you still have the Evital in Graveyard. So, yeah. So, Leos, right, we're gonna mill Miss, Miss, Animadorned, Animadorned, uh, get Noya, Noya, get Curse, Tribute, Summon, Curse, Noya, Noya. This time we're gonna go for the Water Lily instead of Daybreak because this, we have, uh, we're gonna have a stronger array of reptiles in Graveyard. So, it's gonna be. Fine, we're gonna go for 90. We're gonna go for Nunu. Since we still control Noya, we can summon back Nunu here. Go for King. King's gonna detach search Alasia. 
Elysian can summon itself pretty much for free. Link off into Skeletal Soldier. And now we're going to do uh, the Water Lily. We're going to mill Night Sword, and then we're just going to summon any of our level 4 Reptiles in Graveyard, which I chose Nunu because it won't lock us unless it's summoned by its own effect. So summoning off of Water Lily is fine. Night Sword's going to summon itself. Merrymaker, Sargus, Sargus, get this Coliseum. This Coliseum, add us Regulus. And this is actually pretty cool because now Regulus is two live negates instead of just one uh, because we equipped the Elasia. You can also discard one to summon Elasia um, to keep it as an extender, um, which I do believe we are going to do because that is Elasia's effect while equipped. Uh, we're going to go for Promethean Princess. And this time we bring back the Skeletal Soldier just because it's easier that way. Uh, link off into Chain Coils. Um, and then we're also going to link off into the Mantis Monk. And then Chain Coils is going to shuffle back the Mantis Monk after searching Hunting Dance. And now uh, we have the Evil Singularity to activate on opponent's draw phase, standby phase, whenever. And now we have Lars with two live negates. 90, two negates off of Lars, one negate off Regulus, one negate or one interruption off Hunting Dance, and an interruption off Promethean Princess in the Graveyard. So this is an alternative line to playing the zero lock now instead of doing zero lock you can make actual live negates like a multi like this is four negates right here just off these three monsters and then chain coils as i mentioned chain coils can stop a uh, monster effects in hand like this deals and such assuming that you don't play that you don't open any hand traps yourself and then hunting dance can pop one since you control the chain coils and then you have princess as like a last resort you can pop either the lars or the chain coils you know, after Lars has finished all of its negations. So, yeah, this is uh, pretty much the end board. This is just scratching the surface of what Ogdoetic and what Ragnarika can do. And I'd love to explore this a little more. I want to explore what Ragnarika can offer the other uh, typings as well. So I figured, fuck it, let's not just explore Reptile. I took some extra time to really explore the insect lines that Ragnarika can offer because Jessica Robinson already made the plant variant of Ragnarika with Rika, Aroma, and Sun Avalon. With Insector, it's a very weird playline. So instead of doing a combo, because the combo lines get really complex, I'm just gonna show off a test hand. You're gonna see a lot of the relevant players, right? So you're gonna see Almace here. And I guess I'll explain it as we go along. First off is that we need to start with either Dragonfly or Centipede. You have to start with one of those two. So Small World is very imperative to being able to dig for those cards if you don't hard open them. There's no like Lone Fire for Insectors. There's no like alternative lines that get us to these cards easily. I think Small World is like the best way into it without you know, just opening the Insectors themselves. So we're opening with Centipede and we're going to equip it with the All Mace. Now, the reason why this is important is because every time an equip spell is sent to the graveyard while equipped to an Insector monster, well, mostly you just Centipede and Dragonfly. Those are the two most important ones. It will either search you with, if you have Centipede or special summon an Insector from deck if you have Dragonfly. Now, they can only equip other Insectors to them once per turn, soft once per turn, by the way, but if you can keep equipping them with stuff using utter effects and then sending those equips to the graveyard, however they're sent there, you're going to be gaming. So with this All Mace here, we can send it to the graveyard to equip the Randall and then Centipede triggers. So we get to search the Zex Strike Kowow, I think. So it's always treated as an Insector card, and this is a TCG exclusive card when Konami did that uh, create a card contest all those years back, and this came out in Grand Creators because somehow Insectors won, even though everyone knows that the Insector players bought it, but because who the fuck played Insectors? Anyways, Insectors got this card first as a TCG exclusive, and then it, it eventually came out in OCG. It's always treated as an Insector card, and then you have to send another Insector card from your hand or face up fields to Graveyard to activate one of the effects. It either e tellies or it, it equips an equip spell from deck. So it's a really nice card just to be able to search. It's a hard ones per turn, and you need to open another Insector card. Now the cool thing is that it doesn't say Insector Monster. It can send another copy of itself if you draw two of them. 
and it can also send your face up equip cards as well so that's actually really important now you see that we got durandal here off of the all mace and this is really convenient because all mace can equip the durandal from deck or graveyard so it works out perfectly but durandal normally here would search the oliver because oliver can also send equips to the grape to special summon itself it kind of sucks that we drew the oliver because we get one less search off the centipede but it's still it's still fine as you're going to see, we're going to get crazy amounts of extension. Centipede's going to search. And then we're going to use Centipede's ignition effect once per turn to equip the Hornet that we searched off of it to uh, equip to itself. And then we can resolve the Zek Strike Kowow to not only summon Dragonfly from deck, but then Centipede will trigger again to search another Insector card from deck to hand. Now you're starting to see why this deck is, is getting a little crazy. Now, after resolving Centipede, we're going to send our level 1 Oliver and our uh, Centipede to the graveyard to summon out Herod of the Arclight. This is only summon number 4, and we we just made the, the combo nib proof. So basically, if you open All Mace plus either Centipede or Dragonfly, you can have a nib proof combo line where you're going through a bunch of different lines and extenders and utilizing the full power of not just Insects, but of Insector. So now we get to equip Gigamantis, and Gigamantis is cool because when it's sent to the graveyard, it gets to revive any Insector monster from your graveyard. The one issue is that it has to be sent to the graveyard while equipped to a monster, so you cannot link off the monster and Mantis being sent to grave. Mantis won't trigger that way. The monster has to stay on field, so essentially, Mantis can equip itself, so we don't actually have to use Dragonfly's effect to equip to get Mantis as an equip spell. Instead, we can use Dragonfly's equip effect to equip to equip the Hornet. And now we can use Hornet's effect to send itself to the graveyard to pop any card on field. Now, Hornet is kind of a weird one because you don't want to draw Hornet per se. You'd rather search it. Like, it's hard to say what, what ratio Hornet should be at because it's really great for going second. You'll be able to loop this card like crazy. But for going first, it, you have to have a really amazing setup for Hornet to really be strong going first. So the fact that we got the Gigamantis and we got the Hornet means that we're going to get not just one, not just two, but three summons off of this one interaction. Because Dragonfly triggers twice. If two equip spells are sent at the same time, Dragonfly or Centipede, they will trigger twice in the same chain to get you either double special summon or double search. And then, because Mantis was sent to Grave, Mantis then gets to trigger as well to revive the Centipede. I'm chain blocking our Dragonfly here, which is pretty, pretty amazing. And then we get to just bring out two more Centipedes. And this is really important because the soft once per turn nature of Centipede kind of rewards you getting rid of it and then bringing it back and then getting rid of it and then bringing it back. Zealantis would probably go really hard in this deck. Like Zealantising when you have like Herald of the Arclight could probably go really hard. But the 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 capital T truth about this deck is that you're probably gonna run out of Insectors before you run out of equip spells. Because you will summon so much from deck that it is like insane. So let me just stop talking. Let me just keep it going. So we're going to use uh, the same strategy here. Giga Weevil and Giga Mantis are basically the same card, except Giga Weevil gives the monster 2600 defense, whereas a Giga Mantis gives the monster 2400 attack. So if you want to like go for a game or something with uh, using as few summons as possible, maybe something like Giga Mantis would be great. But for the sake of combo lines, Giga Weevil and Giga Mantis basically have the same effect. Now, they are hard once per turn, so it's not like you can cheese these out con uh, constantly, but the fact that there's two of them and they both revive your um, Insectors from Graveyard is really good. So now, we get to use one of the Centipedes to equip Hornet and then Giga Weevil to equip itself, and Weevil and Mantis being able to equip themselves is like really big as well, because that, then that also allows you to get double equip onto one card and it makes it a lot easier to resolve the effect of Weevil and Mantis. So now we're going to get the double Centipede, and we're going to get the uh, Giga Weevil to bring back the Dragonfly. And be because these are all soft ones per turns, uh, you know, I don't have to keep explaining why this is so good, but we're going to keep going. So Giga Cricket is another one. So Giga Cricket gets to equip itself 
by to any face up insector by banishing any insect type monster in your graveyard now maybe if we would have started with the ragnarika side of things this could have been a little more interesting but here we had to banish the giggle weevil uh because it was like the weakest link out of our <laughs> uh graveyard so now we equip giga cricket with its own effect and then we equip hornet with the centipede effect and now we can get the same thing so now centipede's getting a double search and i'm not even gonna hold you guys like this could be a combo oh and armor horn gets us an extra dragonfly normal summon it's very possible to get triple dragonfly on the field in a turn and you can really start with either one of them uh, as long as you have one of the two and an equip card that can send itself because there's plenty of equip cards that can do that there's the uh, uh infernoble arms there's ladybug and then there's hopper there's a lot of options that you have that can actually allow you the opportunity to trigger off your insector lines so now you can go into pico felania and pico felania it can equip any insect from deck to an insect that you control this is where resonance insect comes in and i was theoring out resonance insect because i wanted a way to like mill the insector stuff in case i didn't have a way to like draw into it resonance insect is like perfect at that it's literally amazing at it so i i can't really complain um there's plenty of level five or higher insect targets that you can search not just giga weevil and giga mantis but also something like doom dozer so you can banish it from graveyard so now we can dragonfly equip the ladybug and ladybug is so goaded because she can just send herself to the graveyard and then increase the level of an insector you control by one or two. And then that's beautiful because you can just keep equipping her, just keep manipulating your level and keep getting searches and special summons. So I'm gonna just let it go off. I feel like there's not much more explaining I need to do. Picaflania can shuffle back some of your names so that you have more targets off of Dragonfly. Right, and now we're searching to Doomdozer. And a lot of these cards that we're searching here are really just here for follow-up, right? And now you're starting to see like the, the, the Ragnarika stuff kind of starts to pop out. So now you, you have proper boss monsters. Although we don't use Skeletal Soldier's effect in this deck because we just summoned Herald of the Arclight, which means we're not even locked into anything. We could go Apo, we could go basically any extra deck monster uh, that we have the ability to summon, we can and there's there's almost no restrictions you're only really locked into insect while you control the armor horn otherwise you're like free to go for whatever the hell you want so that's one of the benefits but the ragnarika stuff is really convenient and it gives you a lot of different lines so i would suggest to keep it around in this list and we do s still play like the seed and the beetle but like that's the most that we need to play we don't need to play the full engine we don't even need to play the armored lizard we can just stick to what we know and it works so now we get centipede ladybug centipede trigger to search there we go doom dozer resonance is going to trigger um and i actually goofed here with the resonance because i forgot i had herald the arc light on field um if you're going to go for resonance just use herald of just uh Either do it before you have Herald of the Arclight, or just don't resolve it while you have Herald of the Arclight on field. There are some insects that trigger when banished, so you could probably try to work with that, but otherwise it's like, eh. You, you really don't need to mill off Resonance Insect unless you don't already have a starter. Like, it's, a, it's an alternative way to get to a starter, basically. So, as you can see, we just made an Apo off of uh, Skeletal Soldier plus two, two of our extenders, and we still have Dragonfly effect to equip because we keep rotating through our dragonflies and now we're kind of running out of uh, uh, equips here because now we we only have like ladybug and now we go into chain coils armor horn can summon itself back by banishing three and this deck could really benefit from mighty neptune i'm guessing like i'm guessing like mighty neptune could go really hard in this deck also we banished uh mantis monk because uh, we're, we're going to be making the Stag Sovereign pretty easily, so we kind of don't need it. We go into Stag, and then we, we're going to use Chain Coils and Graveyard to summon itself back out. And now we have 
a double pop off of Stag Sovereign, we have a Chain Coils that could potentially stop all monster effects in, in the opponent's hand, assuming that we didn't open any hand traps, which we didn't. So whatever you see here is what we would have in an average hand. We have Apo with three negates, we have Herald of Arclight with a negate, and we have Hunting Dance uh, with a pop two because we control Insect and Reptile. We cannot use Skeletal Soldier's effect here because we summon Skeletal Soldier is the only one where it preemptively locks you for both of its effects. The other Ragnarikas, you only get locked for the rest of turn. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six interruptions um, off of a, off of our hand, and it's going to be hard for them to swing over here with the Arc Light. Like they're they're not going to be able to swing over it by battle. He actually could have set up a Promethean Princess in Grave. If if I was a little smarter, we could have also set that up because again we we were not locked into anything. We could have went Skeletal Soldier into princess into chain coils that's one thing i forgot to do because i was doing that with ogdoatic a lot but i forgot that you know this deck kind of has the reign to play whatever the hell it wants now i want to go over insects as a whole i kind of use insectors as a segue because the insector lines get really convoluted and really crazy whereas i feel like although b trooper is a little more straightforward it still gets pretty wild so i still feel like i need to cover it and the the just amount of extension that ragnarika gets off of or that insects get off of ragnarika definitely by far make it the best winners of the ragnarika support rika was already doing well ogdoatic was doing okay and it's it's gonna probably stick around but insects feels like they get, they're they going like they're reaching a completely new level that they were not able to reach before and it'll it'll take a really good pilot to bring this to some kind of event but let's just start going through the lines so we're gonna go for resonance insect normal summon and then we can go for seed to summon itself and seed the ragnarika is an extender engine and that's that's the biggest thing to keep in mind as you look through some of these lines, is that Ragnaraka is made to extend a, a combo line, not really to start it as much, although there are times where you can start with it. So we're gonna search Beetle and Bloom, and we're gonna banish the Beetle. Bloom is gonna activate, summon back the Beetle. And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna link off the Resonance and the Beetle to go into our Skeletal Soldier, and that allows Resonance and Beetle to trigger at the same time go for we can summon back the resonance while getting the level five or higher insect search so first off we're going for bear Grimm. and then now we can actually use skeletal soldiers effect like how many decks are you going to be able to do that in not many and we can revive uh beetle here we're gonna link off into the mantis monk and uh we're gonna link off the resonance and the beetle into pico felania so in traditional b trooper or in decks that are not utilizing the full or in yeah i guess in in b trooper or maybe even the battle wasps but the battle wasps aren't really in this video much this is really just b trooper ragnarika um your main line really starts when you go pika felania plus mantis monk when you equip the resonance to another insect plus Pika Felania, that's when you can really start your line. So you really just need access to three insects uh, to start your turn. And if you can get access to that, three insects plus a discard, you're golden, right? So Pico can discard our Bear Grum, target our Mantis Monk, equip Resonance Insect. Beautiful thing about Resonance Insect, it's a really good extension piece, not once per turn. Nowhere on this card does it say once per turn. And uh, we're also going to get the resonance that was uh, sent to Graveyard for the Link Summon of Pika Felania. So now we get to search Doomdozer. So Praying Mantis is really interesting because it just gets to discard, uh, banish itself and then summon a Baby Mantis token. And even though Baby Mantis' token won't really do much, it's just really nice to have that extension. So now we're going to go for Invincible Atlas, and this is going to be really important because Atlas is going to be able to give us the line into the actual B Trooper side of the combos if we don't already open some of the B Trooper stuff. So we set another Resonance Insect to Grave, we search another level 5 or higher insect, this time the B Trooper Mighty Neptune. You're probably getting 
a, a little worried, like, how many level 5 or higher insects are we playing? And the answer is yes. And to be honest, I'm being conservative. Like, once you guys see my list, you're going to know I'm being conservative with the level 5 or higher. So there's a lot more that you could be playing, but I'm being conservative with it just to mitigate um, them being bricks. So now we're going to go Doom Dozer by banishing both resonances. They're both going to trigger to mill two um, insects from our deck to the graveyard. Now we're going to mill Goki Pole and we're going to mill Light Flapper. Light Flapper is going to come up later, but Goki Pole. Uh, when it's sent to the graveyard, it gets to add any level 4 insect monster from our deck to our hand. And we're going to add, guess what, another resonance. Because as I showed with the armor horn in the last combo line, insects getting an, an extra normal summon, kind of nutty. Now we're going to use the invincible atlas effect. I really didn't never thought that this card was ever that good. It's like, oh, it, cool, it's a link 4 that gets to go up to 5k. But now that we can use it to instantly access a card like our sting lancer and on summon sting lancer can add the, the b trooper landing or any b trooper spoiler trap from deck to hand meaning the the counter trap the field spell landing or even the spell that summons a token it gives atlas a lot more power because sting lancer is usually pretty hard to summon on your turn but if you can go into an atlas plus something like doom dozer then you can just tribute Doom Dozer, summon uh, Sting Lancer, then Sting Lancer gives you access basically to the B Trooper engine as a whole. And from there, we can summon out Bear Grum. And from this point, you kind of just need extenders more than anything. You just need a, a card that can get you into B Trooper landing. So we're going to summon out the Mighty Neptune here because we want to shuffle back some of our Banished Insects. Being able to shuffle back our Banished Insects is going to be very important for allowing us to actually play the game. Now we're going to link off into our armor horn and as i mentioned armor horn gets to give us an extra normal summon armor horn actually needs to activate its effect for you to resolve the normal summon it's not like time terry morganite where once it's activated or once it's summoned you get an extra normal summon it's like you need to actually activate the effect to normal summon again so your opponent can interact with it if they if need be so now we're going to go into Stag Sovereign because Atlas is Link 4, Sovereign Link 5, and that just allows it for them to easily access each other. So now we can use... So, and this is a funny thing, right? I, I ran out of level 5 or higher insects in my deck. I use Mighty Neptune to put back the Doom Dozer, and then I use Resonance Insect to search Doom Dozer again. This is, this is levels of extension that shouldn't even be possible. You know what I'm saying? Like just the amount of return on investment that we get for resolving a lot of these insect effects is really good this is almost like branded in a way so now i'm going to use the the b trooper landing sending our armor horn and our mighty neptune to go for cruel saturnus now cruel saturnus only needs one b trooper so you can use something like picoflania or if you have another insect that you don't care about as the um, other material you just need at least one B trooper monster to to use this thing so uh saturnus on summon can add any b trooper card from your deck to your hand so it can be any of them so um i chose to search the formation and again i'm going to summon out doom dozer and this time we're banishing mighty neptune and we're banishing the resonance insect now resonance gets to mill the scout buggy and this is gonna this is actually gonna be important milling scout buggy is actually a really important part of the line so now we're going to banish three to summon out the armor horn. And if there's one thing that's important, it's that you should be banishing all your B troopers because banishing your B troopers, you actually get a lot more value off of that. There may be some insects you want to keep in grave like Bear Grum, Mantis Monk, Scout Buggy. Some of those are the, are, the, are the kind of insects that you want to keep in grave because they have the ability to like recur themselves. But the insects that don't are the ones that, that you want to be banishing and your bee troopers because you can recur all your bee troopers really easily from the banish pile. So Cruel Saturnus, when an insect is banished face up, you can target one of your banished bee troopers and then summon it. So this is part of the reason why you want to be banishing a lot of your bee troopers because you can get them back. Not only with Saturnus, but also with Light Flapper. When I first read this card, I really did not think it was good. I had no clue on how to use it. But legit, sh I saw, like, my friend play this deck against me, and I just saw the light. 
with light flapper. Uh, no pun intended. I, I actually did not intend that pun, but now I'm now the pun's intended. I did see the fucking light with light flapper, and light flapper is amazing because it gets to recycle back two of your banished bead troopers or in your graveyard, right? So you basically get the most value by banishing your insects, right? There's a lot of different effects you can get by banishing insects, right? Armor horn, doom dozer, bear grim, uh, mantis monk. Like in total this turn, we've already banished like three, five, seven, ten. We've banished ten different insects this turn already, and we're still going. We get so much benefit off of banishing our insects, and that's not even the total amount of insects that we're going to be banishing because we haven't used Mantis Monk effect yet, and we're definitely going to use it because it's still in graveyard and it's still ready to come back at any point. So now we go into Seraphim Papillon. And this is one thing that I will say is kind of a misplay because Papillon really does nothing if you're not playing Bee Trooper or if you're not playing the Naturia Mole Cricket. Those are the only two level four lower insects worth summoning back on your, well, I said Bee Trooper, I meant Battle Wasp. I keep getting the two confused, but Battle Wasp or Mole Cricket because Mole Cricket can, Mole Cricket can set up uh, the Naturia Camellia with a double monster negate and uh, the battle wasp uh sting the poison can set up the level two battle wasp can set can be a monster negate quick effect during the opponent's turn and it can search you another uh battle wasp as well so those are really the only two insects worth summoning back off of papillon otherwise this card probably isn't worth link summoning you could say so it's really like personal preference uh it's gonna gain counters for each one that you use but it's whatever right so now we get to use Mantis Monk, Mantis Monk, and Mantis Monk doesn't even have to banish insects. Like you can banish uh, stuff like Evil Seed. You can banish your plants. Like Skeletal Soldier, we're gonna keep around because we can use his second effect, so we're not gonna banish him just yet. I guess we were at a bit of a tight spot, and Barragrim was like the one that we needed the least out of everything in our graveyard, because we, there is going to be a way to revive Cruel Saturnus, and there is gonna be a way to re to revive Scout Buggy. Yeah. So now we get to go in into the Chain Coils. We get to activate formation. We're going to summon out our scout buggy and lose life points equal to its attack. And then scout buggy gets to summon out another copy of itself from deck or graveyard. And then we get to overlay into the Cicada King. Now, I've seen a line where my friend uh, tries to use the Picophilania Shuffleback 3 and then you chain Cicada King to negate it. And then Cicada King can then summon out any insect from your hand or graveyard. And this is how I'm supposed to actually summon back the Light Flapper. I'm, I'm actually not supposed to banish Light Flapper. I'm supposed to keep Light Flapper in Graveyard and then summon it off of this. I'm instead supposed... So that way I keep Light Flapper on field because Light Flapper can actually stop attacks. There's a really strong setup with the insect stuff. I, I Like, you definitely cannot deny how strong the setup is. There, it's definitely vulnerable. It's vulnerable to interruption, and no one's going to debate that how vulnerable it is. But the setup is really good, and I think it's it's worth exploring. If you have any interest in insects or Ragnarok at all, this may be the build that you want to explore if you're not into uh, plants. So now we're going to shuffle back three more insects and go for Mighty Neptune a second time because you can summon him more than once per turn. And Light Flapper may stop you from activating the card's effects this turn, but this is a summoning condition. So you can every, like you can summon as many mighty Neptunes as you want per turn. Like there's no limit. As long as you have insects that are banished that can go back into main deck because they have to be shuffled into the main deck, then you're good. You can keep going for uh, mighty Neptune. We're gonna link into another Picophilania. And this time we're actually gonna get the draw. Uh, we were not supposed to draw Neptune a third time here, but it's, it's funny that we did. I don't believe we can use its effect again, but it's good follow-up anyway. And then we get to summon the Skeletal Soldier by shuffling back the Pico. What are we ending on? We're ending on Stig Pop 2 if they summon from deck or extra deck. We're ending on Chain Coils to potentially negate. We're ending on Cicada King to, to potentially summon from hand or graveyard. We're ending on Sting Lancer, which is a Bestial per se. And on summon, it gets to add a, a B Trooper Spot Trap from deck to hand, which the only one we really have left is Descent or Flying Sting. 
And another thing about Flying Sting, the uh, Counter Trap card, is that if it's in Grave and you control Insect Monster with 3,000 or more attack during your end phase, you actually get to reset it for free. And I didn't know that. And I kind of wish like I found a, a route I could do that with because Stag Sovereign is so easy to make. So yeah, there's there's definitely more to this deck than I think people maybe uh, than than people may know. And it's going to be really interesting to see just how far this deck can actually go. So we have Hunting Dance here, which will be able to get its full pop three because we control both the plant, insect, and the reptile. And then we have Cicada King as a monster negate. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. If we had more space, uh, Cicada King could bring back Saturnus. And then Saturnus could bring back like the Invincible Atlas from our Banished Pile, give us like, you know, threaten the opponent a little harder. This is like Insect does what Insect does. And it's a little convoluted. It's, it's not perfect yet, but it's really, really good and I really think people will enjoy playing a deck like this. I don't know how well it is or how good it is for the format, but if you just want to mess around with insects again, it's a really good time. I'm telling you that. I was flabbergasted to see my friend play this deck IRL. I had to get a little creative because on one hand, I really, really, really wanted the Skeletal Soldier Summon back. I feel like that was so essential to this deck. And I really, really wanted this deck to be able to play around Nibiru. So I found the one way that this deck can play through a nib and still make a hand. You really just need Camellia, Seed, and any other two insects. It might need to be Praying Mantis, but pretty much any other two insects. And then we have Ash Blossom here as our final discard. You will be using the whole hand, but you will be protected from monster negations twice. Yeah, or you will be protected from monster effects twice during the turn. So it's actually a really strong setup. So I'll, I'll let the combo play out. So you actually do play Lone Fire as well. So C Camellia does work as like a bridge off of Lone Fire if you already open the Evil Seed. So just the more you know. So Camellia gets to summon itself Mill Sunflower. We can drop one, summon Seed. Seed can then search search to banish one. And this is actually really important because you want to get the banish one to be able to summon out the Samurai Beetle without needing to search for Bloom because you want that extra extender. So now we're going to go for Beetle. And this is summon number four on Skeletal Soldier. And now Beetle will trigger to summon back Sunflower on summon number five. So now you have a monster effect negation that is not once per turn. It's actually twice because the first time Camellia can just mill two to substitute the the cost. And then the second time you'll have to tribute both your Sunflower and your Camellia. But that's really good. That's still really good. And we still get to resolve Skeletal Soldier, revive one, and go for Armor Lizard. And at this point, we can only work with um, the, the cards that are not our na Naturius. We cannot use the, the Naturius support for anything, really, if we value our negation staying around. So we're going to go for Mantis Monk. We're going to use Praying Mantis to get that extra token. And I know this is a little convoluted and doesn't seem very solid, but trust me, you just need, like, one more extender. And then, once you get to Pico plus, Pico plus another insect, you're good. Once you get to that, to that point, that's when you, you've actually made it. So we use our last discard, go for Invincible Atlas. We get to go for Doomdozer by banishing two, one of them being the Resonance Insect. Insect will trigger, Mill and Goku Pool, Goku Pool will trigger, searching another Resonance. Atlas will tribute to summon Sting Lancer, Sting Lancer will activate to search landing, link off into Armor Horn, Armor Horn effect, go into Papillon, this time, this could have been any rank 3 insect, but still, not important. So we get to go Pappy on here. Uh, we still have the Resonance in, in, in Graveyard, so we're most likely going to go for the Armor Horn effect here. We're going to banish 3, summon it back. Resonance will trigger, milling our Light Flapper. Now by shuffling back all 3, uh, or both Resonance Insects and our Doom Dozer, we get to summon out Mighty Neptune. And then we get to go for a landing because these are both B troopers. We get to go for Cruel Saturnus. 
it's going to search the uh, formation. So now we're going to bring back our Mantis Monk. Mantis Monk is going to banish two to search the hunting dance. Cruel Saturnus is actually going to trigger to summon back our Invincible Atlas. And this is really important because uh, this will allow us an easier line into uh, Link 5. So now I go Stag, we go for Formation. Formation is going to summon back Light Flapper. Light Flapper is going to add back our Neptune and our Sting Lancer, right? So we get our basically our Bestial plus our Ultimate Extender back. Now we're going to shuffle back three more Insects. Summon out Neptune, go for Chain Coils. And then we're going to use Skelts to Soldier, shuffle, uh, put the Mighty Neptune back to the bottom of the deck. And this is a actually a really strong setup, right? So we have a pop three, which means that they cannot just go into battle phase, attempt to swing over Sunflower. That's what makes um, Hunting Dance so good in this scenario. We also could have kept Light Flapper around to negate attacks rather than summoning out the Skeletal Soldier. We have Stag to pop, we have uh, Chain Coils to to potentially stop uh, effects in hand. We have Hunting Dance to stop them from attacking. If you don't use both Sunflower Negates during your turn, then during your opponent's turn, you'll have two live Monster Negates off of this uh, line, and then you still have a Bestial in your hand. So it's a really strong setup. It's two, three, four, five, six interruptions, and they can be really impactful when they, when they work. And then you still have all this stuff in Graveyard that is like crazy extension and all this, that, and the third. You still have Skeletal Soldier. And then you still have like some of the strongest cards in the game. And then Sting Lancer Search, you still have that as well. And Sting Lancer will be on field. So it's a really interesting setup. So now I just shuffled and found a test hand. And so I just said, fuck it, let me try this test hand. And we kind of bricked with the Sting Lancer, right? Because uh, it's like Sting Lancer can't use this effect. It's a really good thing that we opening that we opened the landing because now we get to use both to go for our Saturnus. Saturnus is going to trigger, search its uh, roller. Uh, we're going to banish. And now Saturnus actually gets to summon out the Sting Lancer here. And this is actually really good. So if you open like landing plus Sting Lancer, you actually have a line where you actually get to bring the Sting Lancer out and then get to resolve Sting Lancer's effect to search any B Trooper Spell or Trap card in the game. So we get to go for Formation, go for Pico, and uh, we still haven't used our normal summon yet, which is another amazing thing. And we get to go Pico, equip the Resonance to the Assault Roller. Mantis is going to give us a token. A link two into armor horn. Resonance insects gonna get for Doom Dozer. So basically, we're gonna be able to search another resonance insect because we're in the little Goki Pole, Goki Pole, and then we get our extra normal summon. And you may be wondering why I haven't normal summoned the Camellia yet, and that's because we don't have the um, access to the Ragnarika stuff, meaning we cannot actually take advantage of the Camellia until we uh, have a way to not only mill the Samurai Beetle, but also you do, do it in a way where we can revive the Beetle off of Skeletal Soldier and then link the Beetle off into something so that it triggers its effect to summon back Sunflower. So now we get to go Resonance, Mighty Neptune, we're gonna go uh, Mantis Monk to get our Hunting Dance. Residents will trigger to mill the beetle, which is again really, really big. We're gonna shuffle back two residents to make, and and one more to make a uh, mighty Neptune. Gonna link off into Skeletal Soldier, revive back the uh, samurai beetle, and we can go for stag. Okay, good enough. Okay. Uh, I really should have normal summoned Camellia and then gone for Sunflower there. I don't know why I didn't. But, cool. Okay. We're gonna go for our Invincible Atlas. We're gonna use, um, Formation to summon back our Assault Roller, then use Atlas to Tribute, summon out our Light Flapper. Light Flapper's gonna add back two. Gonna Mantis Monk, shuffle back summon. Skeletal Soldier, shuffle back summon. We're going to go for Chain Coils, and now we're going to go for Camellia. And this is a little safer, 
because Camellia does have the effect to revive the Sunflower anyway, so it's not like you're completely asked out if they have something. But yeah, so as soon as they summon a monster, uh, you can summon out the Sunflower from Graveyard, allowing it to be live. And then you have Chain Coils, Stag, Soldier, Hunting Dance, and Sting Lancer. It's basically the same setup, but this is what, but this was a test hand rather than the real thing. And I'm not even sure if I'm doing this correctly. This is just what I found out about Bee Trooper. I'm not even sure if I'm making like all the right, most optimal plays, but I just, I just knew two things. I knew that I wanted plays around hand traps, and I knew that I wanted plays or I knew I wanted to just explore how far the Bee Trooper engine can go by itself. Or now that it has Ragnarokka, I mean. So this is the in in Insector lines, right? So small worlds, all maces, triple cow owl, uh, one of each of these, two hornet, two hopper. Hopper is like part of the part, uh, part of the equip cards that can send themselves, but you have to be careful with hopper because hopper, it, only allows you to attack with a monster that it was equipped to. And so other monsters can't attack directly, which means this is a really terrible card for going second. It's only really good going first, so that's why I try to limit down on its numbers, but I'd rather draw this and not be able to use it than not draw it than not draw a card that's a uh, send as as an equip at all. So that's important. Uh, only two Hornet, it doesn't it's not really a starter. Uh, only one bloom because it's only really here for seed. We don't really care too much about opening bloom to begin with. Uh, the one Doom Dozer for the Resonance, and then the one Guard Mantis as a small word line. Actually, Doom Dozer is here as, as a small word line as well uh, to make uh, our dragon fly. And actually, it really sucks because Guard Mantis cannot go for Dragonfly because they both have 1k attack. So if you want to try to find another insect extender that you can use, then I say feel free. Just be careful that they are not level 3, because Dragonfly is level 3, they're not dark, because Dragonfly is dark, and they don't have a thousand attack or 18 defense. They just need to be insect, and that's all that there needs to be to it. Uh, we still play the Hunting Dance, I still think Hunting Dance is too strong not to play, and I was experimenting with a bunch of level one tuners because i was like what's the best level one tuner to make herald of the arc light and it is still oliver but i'm wondering if there's another level one extender out there that actually makes sense in the deck but yeah because we're not locked uh just throw a promethean princess in here because it's amazing with chain coils uh we don't have any fire bugs i guess maybe a fire bug is something we may want to look into, but we do have Skeletal Soldier, so I, I guess that counts. And yeah. Oh, uh, when this new one comes out in Infinite Forbidden, I don't know how strong it'll be in Insector, or if it'll be better in Beach Trooper, I don't know. But it's good that we get... This This can also be a small wood line for the Insector stuff because of its stats and its attribute and its level. So it's a really good small wood line. This is the Beach Trooper list now. Um, so just to go through some of our level 5 and higher's, right? So Bear Grum, Neptune, Doom Dozer, Sting Lancer, and Light Flapper, right? Like, we could draw a handful of level 5's and higher's, even though it's statistically unlikely, it's still very possible. Uh, Scout Buggy, we only played a 2 because we only need the 2 of it. It's not a starter, it's an extender. Mantis is great as a discard, or as a mill, but it's an extender, it's not really a starter. Uh, we got the Triple Resonance Insect. This is like the heart and soul of the deck. Um, if this card goes, the deck goes. So, as long as this is around, it's it's amazing how much we can get off of it. We got Goki Pole to milling our... Um, or to searching our like Resonance or our Assault Roller. Scale Bomber is one that I think is a bit of a flex spot, but I think you need some of these more insect kind of extenders just to keep these around. 
or just to keep the deck going because I feel like that's what's really going to save you at the end of the day. Formation, landing, we got triple lone fire for the triple uh, evil seed. We got the triple bloom because uh, unlike in, in Zector where it's more about being able to revive, in this deck it's like you kind of just want to get access to the evil seed, whatever it takes in general. So that's important. One for one to summon out seed. Uh, Beetle because it's the best Ragnarika, I think. For non Ragnarika focused decks, uh, we got Insufusion for the Cruel Saturnus. We didn't, and we got Armor Lizard just kind of just here, waiting for his chance to be used. We got Hunting Dance, Flying Sting, Triple Ash Blossom, Triple Imperm, One Sunflower, Three Camellia. I was also theorying out the Cricket, but Cricket could not do the same thing under five summons. Um, basically, this couldn't uh, set up a in the Sunflower Interruption under 5 or less summons, so I decided to scrap it, just focus entirely on the Camellia, but if I ever needed an Insect to mill or to summon back off of the Seraphim Papillon, I know which one to go for. Retaliating Sea is actually really good because if it's sent from Field to Grave, it actually gets to search um, another Resonance, so that's interesting. Assault Roller sadly has 1600, so it's not searchable off of our Retaliating Sea. But it's just a good, like, just banish one, summon from hand, and does what it's going to do. Uh, and I'm assuming you, you guys know what most of these do by now. Most of the extra deck monsters. Adipus is kind of interesting here, because it gets to target face of cards your opponent controls. Up to the number of insects and plants you control. So, uh, yeah, it's a good incentivizer for... who are trying to play bug but just don't know how to start it's like yeah adipus might be the way zex stagger is one that my friend was playing when he played me with the deck and i just couldn't really find a good reason for um if an insect monster is special summoned you could summon this card from your hand and during end phase each player can special summon insect from hand or graveyard but he gets effects it's like yeah it's okay like it has a good effect but it's only good during end phase so, I don't know. Then we got landing, and then we got some other extenders, some other bosses like Scary Maw, uh, Denonus, and then we have like uh, the Kaiklosa Circular Fairy, like the new circular. But all it really does is just summon out a level 3 tuner. Um, I don't know how much that's going to do for me, but it is what it is, right? And yeah, that was pretty much Beat Trooper. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. This has been your boy Nistro here. Oh man, this video is way too long. Okay, signing out. Fuck. Um, hope you guys enjoyed.